Josie. It's Joe here with the Women Who Lead With Heart coming on live. Just getting ourselves together here. Hello. It's Sunday. It's fun day. It's me. It means it's time for us to go live with the training topic of the week. Who's out there? Come on and say hi. If you're joining live, throw me an emoji or a heart. Say hello. And if you're joining on replay, give me a hashtag replay so I know that you're here. I love to know who's out there that I'm speaking to. Today's topic is a juicy one. What happens when you are filled with self-doubt? Who has had this experience recently or chronically where you feel just horrible? It's, it's the most uncomfortable feeling when you've got something whirling and twirling inside you, some feeling of drain and pain, when you are um, really dragged down by that internal dialogue that is holding you back. I see some friends here. Hi, Meg. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Tiffany. So glad to have you. Come on in and say hi. We're doing a training on what happens when you are full of self-doubt. How do we handle it? Why does it happen? I rec I'm doing trainings like this that are really um, meaningful for me because it's something that I've just gone through. And if I look like the paragon of positivity, if I look like I know what I'm doing, if I look like I am misconfident over here, always full of self-confidence, I'm here to tell you I stumble and fall as well. And I've gone through um, a recent period of in immense self-doubt and nervousness and inner torment, really going through some painful mental exercises of what if and some fear and some dread and um, I can tell you it doesn't feel good so I want to talk about why this happens why do we go through so much drama and mental trauma when we are doubting ourselves first of all why do we do it in the first place but why is it hurt so bad why isn't it something that we can just skip and skate over and be like yeah that's there but I'm moving on why does it it strike us to the core and really stop us in our tracks hold us back keep us in fear, keep us in inaction, keep us from striding out, holding us back from being bold. Why does it affect us so deeply? You ready for a little training? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to teach you a little bit about your brain. There's a part of your brain that is here to keep you safe. It's a big part of your brain. It's a big part of your brain that says, uh, 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 take care, don't risk too much, stay safe. It wants to keep you safe. That's a good thing for your brain to do. It's a good thing that we have this internal mechanism that keeps us from daredevil crazy stuff that could threaten our mortality. Right? We want to stay safe. We want to be healthy. But we don't need this internal mechanism when it's on overdrive, when we're really not risking life and limb. When what we're risking is emotional or intellectual we're not unsafe but we're scared are you relating to this do you ever feel scared there's one thing to be fearful of physical pain but what about the fear and the doubt when there's emotional risk when you're pushing a boundary of your comfort zone and really going outside of that area where you're usually found and how scary it feels to risk, to be seen, to show up, to try something new. How scary it feels when you're way out on a limb. This distorted safety mechanism that's here to protect us goes on overdrive and tells us to be afraid. Are you relating to this? So let's just say you want to go for it. Let's say you secretly dream of striding out and having a new career, a new job, your heart's desire. Or let's say you are risking a relationship. There's something that you feel is on your heart that you need to say, whether it's to bring someone closer or to push somebody away. That can be a really risky emotional space. Or let's say you're just going to expand your range in somehow. You want to try to go for it in a big way. Or you're becoming visible. 
What if you're somebody new in business and you're nervous about what other people will think? Or if you're seen on Facebook or on LinkedIn, you're worried, what will they say? What will my boss think? What will the peers and my colleagues think? I'm showing up in a different way. You feel this, um, this fear, this emotional fear that's holding you back whenever you're risking rejection or failure. When you're thinking, what if it doesn't work? What if they don't like me? What if I fail? What if I'm criticized? What if I fall on my face? And you have that triggered reaction, that overly distorted safety mechanism of shutting down and wanting to hold yourself in and keep yourself safe. Can you relate to that? It can sound like, what if the worst happens? What if I crash and burn? What if they say no? What if they laugh at me? What if I humiliate myself? What if they reject me? What if I'm ignored? What if... Um, it doesn't work. What if I go for it and it doesn't work and I should have stayed? What if I re what if I um, what if I feel um, remorse for the decision? I'm afraid to make the wrong decision. So it sounds like a lot of uncertainty and fear. It can come out as um, you know looking like worry hesitation, second guessing yourself, overthinking something, overcomplicating things, creating layers of have to do's to make it even more complicated because it feels like it's such a massive thing, or obsessing over details, kind of the same thing, or becoming really self-critical and judgmental and creating a lot of barriers for success, like really kind of whipping yourself into action. Not a pleasant place to be. And honestly, you're getting hooked and pulled by some energy that's not going to serve you. You're going to be starting to hustle and scurry and work so hard to cover up for your inadequacies and to prepare for the potential doom that you're afraid might happen, that you're not in your big expansive space. You're coming at it from a what if place, not a maybe it'll all work out great place. And those energies are really different that set you up for a very different outcome. So if you're tracking, give me a hell yeah. Give me like, I can feel this. And I want to see if there's some comments here. Hi, Jewel. Hi, Megan. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. Yeah, you feel it chronically. Hi, Pam. Yes. So this is something you can relate to, right? Where we just, we feel like the, um, the risk, the emotional risk is so high, we're afraid. We're almost struck with terror to take an action because we feel like the consequences might absolutely ruin us. All right. Thanks, Meg, for saying that you can feel this. I'm trying to, in this one-way broadcast, illuminate for you how I have felt when I'm really out there, when I'm really putting myself out there, when I'm really risking something important to me and the fear and the doubt that can come as, a, as kind of like a warning light, but like way overdrive. Okay, so you want to know how to deal with it. What, how, how do we deal with it? When you're so tormented with this inner self-doubt, it's almost like it's torture. It's so painful. I mean, you're functioning just fine. You're going through life. You're making meals. You're eating. You're talking to people. But you've got this internal worry, this internal pit in your stomach or tension in your heart space where you're worried, where you're nervous, where you're just vaguely feeling uneasy all the time. We need to get rid of this, ladies, because it is stealing your, your beautiful gifts. It's your brain doing a number on you. So let's just first recognize that. Hopefully this is helping loosen some of these knots. You're like, okay, if I'm listening to Joe and if I take it on board, it's just my brain. Oh, my brain doing that silly thing, trying to keep me safe. Oh, there she is. Safe Sally, securing safety, there she is. Let's just kind of like ease up a little bit on the self-judgment and the freak out that's happening. Okay, so now let's say we're just gonna address it head on. The problem when it's just kind of whirling and swirling and it's this 
this misty, vague dread, this uneasy feeling of not feeling right or secure or confident. If you just keep functioning with it in the backstory, in the you know backstage of your mind, it's not going to decompose combust. It's not going to metabolize. It's just going to sit there and sort of rot. You're not really processing it. It's still something that you're working around. So my first suggestion to you, or maybe you've received a few suggestions here, but a big suggestion for you is deal with it head on. Take a moment and go, okay, what is going on? Why am I so nervous? Why am I so hesitant? Why do I feel such dread? Why am I so worried? Where's all this doubt coming from? What am I afraid of? And I like to write it down. I mean, I've got like, I've got chapters, girls. I got chapters of, of my thoughts. I don't do it for, you know, for posterity's sake to go read it later. Hell no. I do it to sort of get it out on paper. So my first suggestion is, what am I so worried about? What is, and I'm not judging it, I'm really doing an inquiry. I'm really curious. Oh dear heart, what is going on? Why am I so nervous and fearful and full of doubt? What am I worried about? Write it all down. Sometimes when you write it down, it instantly sort of makes it so much easier to process. Sometimes we are written fears when they're outside of like the, the the back of our brain and they're on paper, we realize they're actually much smaller than we've been giving them credit for. So that might help just putting it on paper. And then I want you to ask yourself, okay, I'm afraid of failing. Just to admit it. What is it? I'm afraid if this if this doesn't go well, I might feel absolutely gutted. I might feel lost. I might feel so much pain. I might feel so much regret for having tried it. I might feel so embarrassed. Own it. What if the worst happened? What if the worst happened about what you're worried about? This is just private work. You're not going to make it worse. You're actually going to make it better by facing it. And you can say, I'm worried that I'll find out something I don't want to know. I'm worried that it will it will take on meaning if I fail again. If I go for that job and I get rejected, I'm worried I'll, I'll feel too disappointed. Just own it. What is it that you might be avoiding? If the worst did happen, how might you take care of yourself? You say, okay, brain, I see you scurrying and hurrying to try to keep me safe and so worried about this thing. But if it does happen, here's how I will find safety. Here's how I know I'll be okay. I have people who love me. I have pets I can love on. I'm breathing. It won't destroy me. I'm still here. Emotional pain will not ruin me. I won't be, I won't disappear from pain. I've handled hard things before. I'm stronger than I know. I'm always okay. In the essence, in the, I have food in the fridge. I'm not hungry. I'm okay. I will be okay. In this way, we can kind of soothe and calm that crazy talk that's going on saying, mayday, mayday, mayday. This is death defying. You can't go there. Hold yourself back. You're addressing it and saying, realistically, I'm going to be okay. Can you find that space, that peace? Can you breathe into that nervousness and be like, okay, I'm nervous, but I'm okay. I'm fearful, but I'm okay. There's hesitation, there's doubt, there's worry, but I'm okay. And I will be okay, even if the worst happens. Okay, then I want you to try something fun. What if the best thing happens? What if it's actually all just a figment of your imagination? What if you go for it and you win? What if you go for it and it's a yes? What if you go for it and it's better than you ever expected? How might you feel then if you had the guarantee 
that this emotional risk would play out in a positive way, how might you feel now? There's a part of you that says, yeah, but, well, I'd be elated. That would be amazing. But that's your brain holding you back. But just for a little while, dream it. What if you were successful? What if the pain went away? What if you win? What if it's beautiful and pleasurable? How might you then approach the nervousness you feel now? Can you see this? Borrowing from your future strength, your future success, and saying, I'm going to use that in my own space now. If I'm victorious then, well then now there's nothing to fear. Now I'm living my truth. Now I'm living in in constant growth. Now I'm proud of myself. Now I see how scared I am, but I'm still willing to try. Now I am learning to be resilient. Now I'm being strong. Now I'm proud of myself. I just love that one. Try this out. See if it helps loosen the knots, give you some perspective, and take a small step. Some perspective might be helpful too. Some of my clients know this. I talk about the 10-10-10. If the worst happens, will it really matter in 10 minutes? Maybe. In 10 days? Maybe not. 10 months? Probably not. And in 10 years? I won't even remember this drama. This will just be something I lived through that I created, like this drama that my brain was manufacturing. I don't even remember what it was. So try to borrow a little perspective. Find a way to loosen the fear. Imagine your successful self in the future having tried and won and speak to yourself now from her, that bright spot that knows what she knows can be true that you can win and see if it can borrow, you can leverage some bravery and courage from her. All right, that's what I've got for you tonight. That's my one-way training without hearing what's really up for you. What's the emotional pain on your heart? What's the fear that you have? What's the big dream that you're nervous to go after? I don't know, but do you want to tell me? Do you want to tell me? I offer these free clarity calls where you can give it to me. You can actually talk to me. You can bring yourself to this conversation and say, Joe, all right, I heard your whole conversation about self-doubt. I want to talk to you. This is what I'm experiencing. And the purpose of you doing that is for me to meet you there and see, can I help? This is what I'm here to do, ladies. This is what I'm trained to do. I am a coach and I help gals like us break through the territory that's holding us back like a web, like a sticky web holding us down and making life miserable at times, maybe not all the time, because we want to feel better. We want to feel better. We want to do better. We want to make things happen. We want to live our glorious lives on fire and on purpose and with passion and with happiness and fulfillment and not being held back and worried and full of dread and fear. I know it's possible. I've worked through it. I continue to work through it. Love you, Meg. And I'm going to put a link in the comments below for if you're curious about what it would be like to have a coach, what would it be like to have me in your corner, you can book a call with me and we can talk about it because you are worth it. And getting rid of this type of emotional pain and drama is so (laughs) worth it to be free, to be calm, to be happy, to be free. All right, ladies, tell me what you think. This comes with love, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye for now.